Story 1 by Reddit user Whovian110 First, let me set some context to the story. This story happened just over a year ago now, in my home state of Arizona. When this took place, I had just turned 17 and had been looking for a new dirt bike to ride. Now, I don't really want to go into detail of the specific location, but I will say we were just about an hour out of Metro Phoenix. But hey, now on to the story. Me and my dad have always been into dirt bikes and off-roading vehicles. Almost every night you could find us on our phones looking on Craigslist and various other websites for a good deal on a dirt bike. One night, we both had the idea of looking on Let Go. So quickly, we both downloaded the app. While we were both searching for a motorcycle, my dad stumbled across an amazing steal. It was a 250cc dirt bike for only $750, which is really good considering that this brand usually went for $1,500. My dad offered the man $600 instead, and without hesitation, the man accepted, which worried me. I told my dad that it didn't seem right, as the price was really low. And he didn't seem to care. He wanted a bargain, and there was no visible problems with the bike. Though I tried to talk to my dad, his heart was set in stone, and he went that night to go and pick up the bike, and I came along with him. On the original listing, the address for the pickup was just down the road, about five minutes away, but the seller messaged us and told us to meet him in a parking lot about 20 minutes away, which at the time, we didn't seem to take note of. As we were driving to the location, things started to get weird. The man now changed his mind on that location and told us to meet him at his house, in a part of town that isn't the best, which is about an hour away from our house. This is where I started to worry, but as my dad was trying to save money, we went anyways. Once we arrived to his neighbourhood, we quickly realised that there were no street lights and it was about 10pm. We were driving through the neighbourhood looking for the address, but the house number simply didn't exist. It seemed it was skipped. So my dad, being determined, he parked and started messaging the seller. Deep down inside, I was freaking out. Once we were parked, two sketchy-looking vans filled with men pulled up, one in front of us and one behind us. I quickly realised what was happening. My dad didn't. My heart sunk as I saw the doors open and sketchy-looking men dressed in all black emerged and were staring at us as if they were planning something. My dad was still messaging the seller. The text went something like this. Dad. Hey, we're at that location, but we can't find the house number. Seller. I know. I gave you a fake address. I'll be out there right now. Once I saw the text, I put my hand on my dad's arm and said, This isn't right. It's sketchy. I think this is a setup. This is when my dad realised, and we left. We pulled out of the neighbourhood and thought we were safe, but realised that one of the cars that was parked next to us in the neighbourhood was following us. Luckily, it was a long drive home, and a lot of time to lose them. We were driving what seemed like forever, and we finally lost the other car. I hope. Once we lost them, I started explaining to my dad that that was probably a setup, and they were probably going to rob us, or maybe even worse. Luckily, we got home safely, but it could have ended badly. The next night, I saw on the news that a man was robbed and killed while buying a motorcycle off of the same app at the same location. As cliche as it sounds, I genuinely felt sick when I heard that, as I felt that it could have been us. We could have been killed and robbed. Ever since that incident, I deleted that app and haven't touched it since. Story 2 by Reddit user Petty Ass Biz. Hello everyone. I've always wanted to post my story here, but I'm not very articulate, so I haven't done it until now. I want to tell my story because hopefully it can stop young girls or boys from being harmed. By the way, my name is Sarah. 
So when I was 17 years old, my family and myself moved to a new area which meant I had to quit my old job. I always wanted to work to be able to support my coffee and shopping addiction, so I was very eager to find a new job. But this time, I wanted something that paid more. I thought I was way too smart to accept minimum wage, so I started applying to be a receptionist at some vet clinics in the area and some other lower-level receptionist jobs. I don't know why I thought I would be able to get a job like this while in high school. All I can say is, I was an ambitious kid. I was on Indeed and would also drive to locations to fill out applications, but I wasn't getting any callbacks, so I became frustrated and turned to Craigslist. My mother told me over and over again not to go on that website, and I watched the Craigslist killer movie. I knew how stupid this was. But I was 17, so I thought I was invincible. I applied at a few more receptionist jobs and vet clinics that I made sure were reputable places. I received one call regarding my Craigslist applications. It was from a man who sounded very professional and told me that he had just started a company and needed a receptionist, which already sent red flags off in my mind because I had not filled out an application for any new companies. I asked him what the name of the company was, and he dodged my question. But I was still very interested. I wanted to make good money. He told me I had a really nice sounding voice, which I thought was good because if I was going to be working as a receptionist, I should have a good phone call voice. He also said that I was beautiful, to which I blushed at at the time. He told me that he would love to meet me for an interview that day, and I was very excited. I grabbed a pen and paper and asked him where his company was, and he said they hadn't moved into their building yet, which was a little strange. But I said, no problem, where would you like to meet? I'll have my mum drive me. Then he started to act a little off when I mentioned my mother. He said, no need to bother your mother, I'll pick you up. That sentence was the point where I knew I was talking to a bad guy but I still tried to reason about it in my head because I really wanted this job. I had been applying for months and this was the first call I received. So I said to him, No, it's okay, my mum will drive me. She wouldn't want me getting into a car with a man I don't know. And that's when he started telling me that the only way he could do this is if he could pick me up. He started getting annoyed and said that there were so many women applying for this job so he needed to get an answer as soon as possible. He also started telling me all the opportunities I would be missing out on. At that point, I was very conflicted and asked if I could give him a call back in a moment. And he sighed and said yes, and don't make him wait. I hung up the phone and was relieved to be done with that conversation. I went to my mum's room and explained everything to her, and she lost her mind. She said, Sarah, that guy is some pervert. Don't call him back and then she proceeded to look up the police station number because she wanted to report him to the police. I was embarrassed and begged her not to. He proceeded to call me over and over again after I hadn't responded. I didn't want to talk to him again, so I texted him and said, no thank you for the offer. He lost his mind. I received so many text messages along the lines of, dumb bitch, I have so much money I could have taken care of you. I know where you live etc. For weeks after this incident, I felt so guilty because I thought I put my entire family's life in jeopardy. I had a hard time sleeping, and I rejected any interviews immediately because I thought they could have been him using another person to bait me out of my house. I wish I would have allowed my mum to call the police, because I think he was going to do something really messed up. Before I continue to the next video, I just want to say a big thank you for choosing to watch this video, and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you are, please show your appreciation by liking this video, and if you don't already, subscribing to this channel. It really does help me out. Thanks. Story 3 By Reddit user Missy Alisi I've been looking to sell my car before the summer is over, so I took to Facebook and Craigslist to find potential buyers in the area who were willing to take it off my hands. I posted my ad on Facebook Marketplace, which is essentially Craigslist for Facebook, where you can buy and sell products around an approximate location. 
I figured it would be the perfect place to find someone near me who was in the market for an old fixer-upper. My piece of junk, that is. I should add at this point I am a 22-year-old woman, and on Marketplace, obviously, you post from your Facebook account, so whoever sees my posts can go to my profile and message me. Unfortunately, unlike Craigslist, people knew exactly who I was before they were buying. I had several people interested, so I answered them in order, and the first person just so happened to be an older woman. From her page, she looked harmless, so I thought it would be no problem. I was busy for a few days, so I told her I'd get back to her soon, and she said OK. Her last message to me said, That's fine. Let me know Thursday. Bill. A little weird but I thought maybe her husband was messaging me from her account, or maybe it was even a typo. Who knows? I gave her the benefit of the doubt. On Thursday, I got a random message from another account, a man who will call Bill. He messaged me the exact same message as she did the day before, which was something along the lines of, Interested? Can I come and see it? I put two and two together and realised that the woman signed Bill on her last message the day before and I figured it was her husband now contacting me from his own account. I asked if he was the one who messaged me from her account the day before and he confirmed, saying that she was his wife who had passed away back in March. Strange, but everyone has their own way of coping. At this point I felt bad for the guy and there weren't really any alarm bells going off. Other than that, it was slightly weird that he was contacting me from his dead wife's Facebook. It was also weird that his Facebook didn't have any photos of himself, just his backyard as his profile picture and cover photo. I chalked it up to him being older and not caring about social media. He ended up saying he'd like to see the car, and we scheduled a day for him to come and look at it. Unfortunately, I had to give him my house address because the car's brakes are not in working order and the car isn't insured, so I couldn't take it on the road to somewhere nearby to meet up. Regardless, I was still not too worried because my boyfriend and his mother were at the house. I live with them in the summertime, so I thought if push came to shove, there would be someone there to mediate. He was supposed to come at 3.30, but 3.30 came and went without him showing up. He said he lived in a town about half an hour away, so we waited a little while to see if maybe he would come late. I was pissed for a while because he just wasted my time confirming he wanted to see my car and possibly buy it, and he stood me up without any explanation. Around four, I gave up and started playing some games on my laptop. My boyfriend, bless his soul, still kept watch over the driveway to see if Bill would come out after all. Suddenly, he had urgency in his voice. Alyssa, I think it's him. I got up and ran to the window, just in time to see a small car with an unknown driver and a young man in the front seat pull away from the front of our driveway. Apparently, the car pulled in front of the house and sat there for several seconds before driving away, and I just caught the tail end of it. I live on a quiet street of a pretty safe suburban area, so it most likely wouldn't be some random stranger who just happened to be passing by. They were definitely in front of the house waiting for a minute. My boyfriend looked disturbed and kept repeating that he was sure it was them and that they got cold feet. We all thought it was weird that they would drive a half hour only to leave. My boyfriend's mother said that she thought it was because they thought they could get me, a vulnerable young woman, alone and that they'd sped away once they saw there were several cars in the driveway. One of the cars was the one I was selling too and it looked exactly like in the photos I posted on Marketplace so I was sure the car wasn't the issue. The most disturbing thing to me was the fact that there were two people in the car, and at least one of them looked like he was capable of doing something, should I have been alone. Thank God in hindsight that there were several people home, or the situation definitely could have escalated. I really wish I'd hadn't given them my address, and I can only hope that these people don't ever come back. Story 4 by Reddit user 50 Shades of Krillin. I put up an offer for a nice blue Fender Stratocaster guitar on Let Go, $170 or best offer or trade. 
Within minutes, I had an offer from a guy called Eric. He wanted to trade me for an Ibanez Telecaster copy and $50. Long story short, it was a deal, and we decided to meet. We decided to meet at a pretty popular coffee place in D.C. The meeting time comes after school, and he's not there. So, I order a latte and sit in the car with my dad, who drove me there. A black Nissan SUV pulls up, and I get a text from Eric. I'm here. I head back inside the coffee shop with him. We pull our guitars out of our gig bags, and he looks inside at the car and says, I didn't know you were coming with someone else. At this point, my mind goes, What in the actual f***? But what comes out of my mouth is a nervous chuckle. I start explaining to him all the details about the guitar, until I get to saying that I installed a humbucker in the bridge pickup slot. He says, Oh, I'm not a huge fan of those. Sorry, but I'm not interested anymore. I tell him not to worry. I nervously shake his hand, tell him to take care and go back in the car. I got really bad vibes from that dude, and he seemed sold when I sent him the demonstration video of the guitar. As we start driving back, I notice Eric is following us, even on the interstate back into Maryland. Let go says this guy lives in Arlington, so he shouldn't be anywhere near us, the other way in fact. I let my dad know, and he slows up and pulls next to the Nissan that Eric was driving. All Eric said was, and drove off. My dad made sure he wasn't following us anymore, and he apologised to me for some odd reason, which is rare for him. We both agreed that Eric was probably up to something, and that we should take a break from let go for a few days. The next stories on this video are just creepy encounters and have nothing to do with classified ads. Story 5 By Reddit user J. Pager Last night, around 11pm, I was lying in bed on my phone when I started hearing unusual noises from outside. Whenever I hear noises outside, my first thought is the wind, squirrels, etc. But these noises were different. I don't know how to explain it, but they didn't sound natural and were consistent for at least 10 minutes. For context, I live in a small home on my grandparents' property behind their house and my house backs up directly onto a main road. My bedroom is on the entire top floor and the upstairs has a door that leads directly to a patio deck area that's only accessible by the stairs on the outside of my house. So if someone is on the deck, they can look directly into my bedroom from the outside because of the windows on the door. After a while of hearing these noises and feeling uneasy, I stacked my pillows on my bed in hopes that if someone was out there looking, they wouldn't see me laying in bed. I was also scared that I'd see someone there, so I blocked the view of the door as best possible to make me feel more comfortable. Soon after that, I increasingly become more uneasy to the point of recording myself in the dark saying, I think there's somebody. Long pause because I heard something so I start to whisper. Outside my bedroom door. But I don't want to lean forward. This was at 11.07pm. As I'm typing this, I went back to listen to the recording and you can hear a slight thud right after I pause. I try to brush it off and after 10 minutes or so I no longer hear anything. I'm more at ease and I doze off to sleep. Which brings me to now. My grandma walks over to my place to give me something. While she's doing that, she asks if I was outside around my house last night with a flashlight. An immediate panic sets in. She says my grandfather saw someone walking around my house with a flashlight last night. He thought it was maybe me, but wasn't sure. So after a few minutes, he made his way back to the door to check. But by that time, they were gone. I've had odd things happen to me since last October. Someone tried to break into my car in broad daylight with people all around, with a bright red light flashing in my car indicating it's locked. Someone tried to pick pop the lock with a hammer or crowbar. I was house-sitting a half a mile away from where I live, and I'm almost certain whoever did it had probably been watching me. 
Other odd things have happened too, but I usually brush them off to avoid anxious thoughts. It makes me uneasy given I just moved out here at the beginning of the year. My disabled uncle had lived there for 30 years before I moved out here and had never utilised the upstairs. Maybe lights being on upstairs all of a sudden has piqued the interest of others. My uncle only had one incident similar to this, but it was years ago. Also, since I've been renovating there, there are random things like glassware, a bed frame, a lamp, etc. sitting out on my deck. But nothing was touched. Nothing was taken. Which is more unsettling to me than if something was taken. Also, random side note, but maybe not. Last week we had a bad storm in our area around midnight. Constant lightning, loud thunder, heavy rain and wind. Me, loving storms, decided to step outside on my deck to record some of it. After a couple of minutes, I heard screams in the distance as a car started approaching on the main road. Directly after the scream was a long, drawn-out, Help! And then right as they were passing my house, there was a loud but short, Help me! I heard this all in real time and was shocked I caught it on video. Why was the passenger window down in a storm? They were genuine screams that sounded to be female, and they must have been very loud as they were able to be caught on video. Although you can see my house from the main road, you wouldn't be able to see someone standing outside above the road, given the tree cover and how dark it was. It's just strange. There's weird stuff happening, and I don't know how to explain it. I just bought a security camera to place outside so I'll have better peace of mind once it's installed. Maybe I should start trusting my gut instinct more often. Goes to show how easy it is to sense the presence of someone, even if you don't see them. Story 6 My school district provides free busing to students from kindergarten through 8th grade. I've been riding the public bus for two years now, as I'm a sophomore, female, 16, and haven't gotten my driver's license yet. The public bus is open to anyone who can pay, but usually there is a designated one for students, just because of timing with school's release and the bus routes. Once you get on the bus, it makes its regular stops and then stops at Central Station and naturally you transfer. At the start of this school year, I had no problem taking the bus before. The previous year was pretty average, not many problems aside from the occasional drug bust at the station but usually nothing intense. Nothing that happened to me anyways. Now, I took a single transfer bus to my house, meaning I took two buses in the afternoon to get home. One bus was majority students, and the other was typically random people from the city. You usually got a couple of people going to or from work. Maybe a few students, a parent or two, and the occasional addict. On one particular autumn day, I got on the bus and it was unusually empty. Usually, I'm one of the first people on the bus, but first in a long line of people. Today, the line was about five people long versus the usual 15. I got on the bus taking a window seat and placing my bag on the outer seat. I know it's inconsiderate to do, but I figured that the bus was empty enough that if someone wanted to sit, I could move it. Because of stories my parents' friends had told me, I was sceptical of most people trying to sit beside me if they didn't look my age. But it really cannot be avoided on public transport. Almost immediately after I take my seat on the bus, a sixth person enters. A man. He's older and definitely looked like he was intoxicated. He walked over to me and asked to sit next to me, gesturing me for me to move my bag. If I was using common sense, I would have said no. However, I have a problem with telling people no when others are around and garnered a few glances from other people on the bus. But no one really commented on how it was odd to want to sit next to someone when there was an extensive amount of seats on the bus. He could have sat on his own, but decided that the seat next to me looked good. Despite having my hood on over my head and earbuds in, the man tried to strike up a conversation. It started off with, I am a man of God and progressed into, I have never hurt a woman. There's no need to be nervous, ma'am. 
I couldn't tell if he was genuinely trying to be reassuring, although I knew I didn't look scared. Probably just uncomfortable. Maybe even bitchy. I would just nod and give a polite remark or two. A few more people had gotten onto the bus, and one man in particular seemed to think that it was odd some old guy was sitting next to me and talking to me when it was clear I was uncomfortable. Hey man, there's plenty of seats here. Why don't you move? The man beside me had just said something about how he had a bad back and moving would only make his pain flare up. The man who had asked the question gave me a glance as if to ask, You good? But otherwise dropped it. The bus had left by now and we were now at the third stop. The man who had asked if I was all right was long gone and the man began to talk again. My seat buddy had been talking for a bit, mostly incoherent things, and I just stared out the window. That was when he turned to me and said, I've never attacked anyone. And I just kind of stared at him. What are you supposed to say to that? I just kind of laughed it off before he repeated the words. And then he rolled up his sleeve, which revealed a fair amount of scars, scratches, and what I could only assume were injection sites. I've never laid a hand on a woman. Once, this girl scratched up my arm, and I just let her. It's wrong to hurt women. And I just laughed it off again, saying it was good that he was respectful. He nodded and took my return of speech as an invitation to keep talking. It was all weird about respecting women, how the Bible said that people who were good to women would get their reward in heaven. And then he asked me where I was getting off. I just shrugged, saying my stop was coming up. That was probably a mistake. He began asking me about street names. Which street I was getting off on, Maple or Oak? Did I know where Pine was? Could I walk him to Pine Street? Things that I wouldn't do. I had pulled out my phone and texted my friend saying that I was sitting next to someone rather strange on the bus and asking if I should get off early. As if he realised what I was doing, the man stopped. I told you, I'm a nice guy. I never hurt a woman. Never. I said I was glad that he was a nice guy and dropped it. I started humming, hoping that he understood I was listening to music and was done talking. He tried to initiate another conversation, and out of paranoia, I pulled the string to get off. He said, Oh, is this your stop? I was hoping you'd come with me down to Pine. I laughed and just said I had to go. He touched my hand and asked if I sold weed. I just said no, thinking it was an odd question. This earned me a nod and a, See you soon. The comment was odd, but I had already brushed it off, more preoccupied with all the reassurances. The comments about never hurting a woman, about having never fought back, being a godly man. It all just felt wrong. I had texted two of my closest friends at the time, Jessica and Hector. Both agreed it was odd and were glad that I had gotten off the bus earlier than my actual stop. I had about a ten minute walk to my house, in the rain but I felt a lot safer off of the bus. Fast forward a week. There are a lot of metal pipes in my backyard because we are clearing out the basement of our admittedly very old house. But the people who had owned it before us never fully moved out and left behind a fair amount of metal, which my parents were wishing to take to the junkyard and get paid off for. My father had joked it was enough to buy a large dinner for our family, which would be a feat considering my parents have five of us kids all with very large appetites. I was home alone with three of my siblings, the youngest three. It was cold out and the others were upstairs watching television. I was sitting in the dining room on my computer doing God knows what, and that was when I heard my dog bark. Instinctively, I checked the front yard. There had to be something there, or someone. Maybe it was just a passerby but there was no one there. As if forgetting about the backyard entirely, I brushed it off. However, my dog was not so easily satisfied. He continued to bark, now at the back windows, 
and I had to drag my lazy ass across the house to peer at the backyard. And that was when I saw my friend from the bus. There he was, piling the rusted pipes into a trailer attached to his bike. He didn't seem to notice me or my dog watching from the window despite all the noise. It was almost methodical, the way he shoveled the pipes into his little trailer. I didn't know what to do. I could yell, but he would know I was home alone. Why would I be calling out to some guy robbing me? I didn't want to put my siblings in danger. So, I simply hooked up my dog and prepared to go outside and confront him. I knew it was the same man from before because when I stepped out the front door, his head finally turned and he smiled. Oh hey, I thought you lived on Maple. After all, that was where you got off. He seemed unfazed, while well, I was stunned. And that was when I heard the familiar crinkling of gravel under rubber and realised that my mother had made it home. She was out of the car in an instant, yelling at the man to return her property, even if it was just rusted pipes. The man waved one of the pipes at her in a threatening manner before hopping on his bike and riding away. My mum wasn't too pleased with me, saying I should have done something. I told her I did what I could, and she said she was glad I was all right. She filed a police report, but no one ever really found him. And what could they really do? The pipes were practically worthless and long gone by now. I still haven't mentioned what happened with the man to anyone but Jessica, Hector, and a few other friends of mine. Now, I only take the student bus to a busy coffee shop downtown and walk the rest of the way home. I take more complex ways and add as many twists and turns needed if someone tries to start some kind of conversation with me. I know it's probably just some sort of paranoia, but I can't figure out how that guy found my house. Whether it was a coincidence or not, he knew where I got off the bus. He remembered, and that was enough to phase me for ages. I still think about this, even though it happened at the beginning of the 2019 to 2020 school year. Thank you for watching and or listening to this video. Again, if you enjoyed my narration, please hit the like button, and if you don't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you thought of these stories in the comment sections below, and check out the links to the original posts in the video description. If you have a story you would like me to narrate on this channel, please email me at mrsinisterstories at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching.